Look who it is. You guys ready for a walk? Huh? You ready for a walk? film him? You mind if I film your dog? Make sure I don't get in the spider's web here. Wow, he's got beautiful colors. He's old though. I don't know how he'll do. He's old. Okay. Yeah, they're they're really well with they the dog. They are so pretty. Yeah, this guy is gorgeous. What's his, his or her name? Merlin. Merlin. I'm a huge medieval fan, so I like that name. <laughs> We're actually uh, documenting a whole bunch of uh, traveling. Um, I built a van out with a camper and we're traveling as much as we can getting around. So that's why I'm filming. I appreciate it. Let me film your dog. It'll just be, it'll just be clips anyway. How you doing, big boy? <laughs> He's old. How old you got? See them now? Yep. Nine and a half. Wow. Yeah, he's nine and a half. I had a border collie who passed away two years ago. Lived to sixteen. They, uh, their lifespan is uh, ten to thirteen years. So you, and, get, you uh, got a good one then, huh? Yeah. He uh, just took a turn for old. Okay, Merlin, that's now. Don't need to get to know him that well. Oh, that's that's fine by um, fine by my dog. Believe me. He. Um, uh, last week we thought we were gonna have to put him down. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, he ha ended up with a, he's got a spine, um, compressed nerve, and we, we couldn't stand up. And yeah, that's why so he's he on the harness versus the collar. I'm going to pause this video some here. Steroids and some... All right, I, I wanted to stop filming there um, when I was talking to the people with that gorgeous dog because they started uh, talking about how their dog is going to need to be put down here shortly. Um, it's a 10-year-old um mastiff and it's got some nerves damage in his back so we started talking about that i didn't want to put that on camera no me take the time to dig deep underneath this red heat 
Come on, Vera. Come we on. could really Cut the leash around my hand. Get up, Barrett. There you go. Come here. Where are you? Oh boy. Good girl. But you guys are ready for some water after that hike, huh? You want some water? Bella? Why are you so camera shy? You've always been so camera shy. Are you wanted? Is that what it is? Did you do something bad in a former town? Well, we're back from the walk and uh, these guys are all about this van. They just get so excited. I think they're adapting really well. Um, so just wanted to give you what my routine is every day. 
so far with these three or four days that I've been I've been living in the van. It's been pretty interesting to say the least. My routine is is uh, I work um, from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, two days a week, and then the next week I work five days a week, rinse and repeat. So on the days that I work, which I've worked yesterday and I'll work tonight, my routine is is I will wake up probably around two o'clock, and um, it's interesting getting up in the van with two dogs because they're the number one priority. So I've got to um, get a jacket on and get my boots on and you know a pair of jeans and getting ready in a 60 square foot place is uh, interesting with dogs because I have to get them up on the bed when I need to get something and then get them down off the bed well one of them Bella and then Barrett's got to stay up there so I can get ready um, and then the first thing I do is I take them out um, so they can go to the bathroom then right after they go to the bathroom, we get back inside the van, uh, I go get something to eat really quick. And today it was Wendy's, the Baconator. Um, I'm not gonna eat like that for long. Uh, the first, I would say, month in van life, uh, in living in a van, the first month is just learning, organization, and um, the easiest routine for the time. So, I was going to take off, I'm off Monday, Tuesday, I was going to take off and go south nor at, uh, towards Athens, Ohio, but uh, I I uh, have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, so I only work Wednesday, Thursday, so I decided that I'm not going to go anywhere Monday and Tuesday. I'm going to spend both of those days, complete, now that I've learned what I need quick access to, things that I didn't expect. And things that I don't need access to and then this whole area to the right I removed the seat um, and that's gonna be a platform I'm gonna build a platform right off the floor about a foot right here about a foot and a half wide and then that's gonna be a drawer I pull out and that's gonna be all my um, amenities for like showering and, and things like that I'm gonna be pulling out every day maybe keep my batteries in there uh, I don't know yet and then on where the seat area is, I'm going to build that up to about eight inches below the window line here, a platform, and that's going to be all storage. I'm not sure what I'm going to put in there. It might be housing my, my power unit, my batteries, my inverter, DC to DC charge controller, the lithium ion phosphate batteries, lithium iron phosphate batteries. I don't know, but that's definitely going to be a platform so the dogs can sit up on it as well. And it's going to keep anything from being seen inside the van so this door I can't really close it because Barrett's laying right there that door is always shut when I'm not in the van so organization all the next two days buying uh, the materials to build the cabinetry and spending two days figuring it out working Wednesday Thursday and then I think I'm gonna take off right after work which is Friday 6 a.m. And we're gonna head south, uh, maybe about four or five hour drive. Might only be three, but um, depending with the dogs. And head south and, and go camping for, for three days. So, man, what an interesting first couple, what, what you realize when your first couple days living in a, in a vehicle, especially a van, I don't think an RV can do the same things that a van can do, uh, because it's more like a house. This isn't a, a house house where you're you're so comfortable inside of it that you want to just be in the house all the time especially in inclement weather um, it forces you to go out and do things like it forces it forces me which I'm glad it does to take the dogs out to all the metro parks around here and I can't wait to hit the state forests and the national parks with these dogs um, I got to meet uh, a couple cool people today one with this great gigantic dog and um, I also passed a an old cyclist friend of mine that I went to high school with Lindsay so Lindsay hello if you're watching this um, she was riding by uh, helmet on mask on or not a mask on but a helmet on and they rode by and she's like beautiful dogs and I'm like Lindsay and she's like she turned around real quick she came back she was with a friend of hers and uh, she didn't recognize me right off the bat as soon as I told her my name because I haven't seen her in 25 years 27 years probably 
um, I'm 45 years old. Uh, Lindsay, you haven't aged a bit. You look, still look like you're 18. Um, I didn't get that on camera. Um, I had the camera off and the dogs were getting pretty tired at that point in time. But also, I, I'm in a Home Depot parking lot and I came here after work to sleep. Um, and I live in a, or, or I don't live, but I was staying, this Home Depot is in a very, um, I guess, a good, good part of the neighborhood. It's, it's higher income. And it's really starting to, when you live in a van and your eyes are more open because you see so much, so much more stuff. I drove by and there's these, um, these five or six, uh, do-it-yourself barns sheds that go in your backyard that are sitting in a side parking lot away from the building and I was dr drove by there because that's where I wanted to um, park for five minutes to let the dogs out and take them out in this huge fo uh, field that's across the way and I noticed that there was a bike a bicycle like a 10 speed or a mountain bike excuse me a mountain bike in between the storage sheds and I thought that was kind of weird and then it just dawned on me right off the bat that um, Someone is probably staying in there with what's going on with the pandemic. It's hitting everybody hard, and you're seeing things, especially in the neighborhoods that I'm in right now. You're you're seeing people go through hardships, and that's probably what happened with this guy. And uh, I came back over this morning, or after right before I took the dogs for a walk, which is my morning. It was three o'clock in the afternoon to see if that bike was still there, and the guy was actually coming out of the shed, and he had his bike all packed up. He had book bag or uh, backpacks on it he had duffel bags were on the back tires he had a backpack on same exact mountain bike and he was getting out of the shed and, and he took off um, I thought about filming it but I don't want to film things um, that are that are negative uh, too much on this channel but I mean you guys get the gist and maybe I'll swing back over after work this morning or tomorrow morning and just to get film of the bike if the bike's there and my thoughts are more, more power to him if that's a his best refuge that he can get it's um with the times we're going through um i hope he can do it for as long as he can especially through the next two months because the weather is really going to get brutal it's going to get down to the teens uh maybe even near, near zero degrees and with the wind chill factor um i'm pretty sure those um, sheds are gonna offer a little bit of uh, a little bit of refuge from the wind and the cold but anyway I'm gonna wrap it up and uh, we'll see you guys all again tomorrow bye I forgot one more thing to add I wanted to answer some questions that are on uh, YouTube so um, from core Kalba anyway thanks for our anyway but especially thanks for watching if you go to a national park for the 14 days and stay at most of them, I, it's nice to pull out a big tent you can stand in and get away from the van for a bit. Get an inflatable chair and a little TV and you're all set. I have my laptop, um, which is perfect for watching television. I also have uh, a Cabela's chair that folds out. But yeah, that's, that's, the, that's, on, that's on the map for things to do. Um, Chris Reed, which is my first real friend, um, I can call a friend on YouTube, He's uh, one of my, probably my first follower, but definitely my biggest uh, commenter. And him and I have actually talked on the phone. And Chris says, congratulations on the move out of the house into the van. I know you'll miss that big, beautiful home. I've never seen a home with that many ceilings, uh, that many tray ceilings. He remembers when he sold his house. And I really only lived, he said he only really lived in the master bedroom and kitchen. All the rest was wasted space. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too, man. Uh, yeah, I, I was in the same boat. Kitchen, family room. I slept on the couch probably five out of seven days. Um, and then in the master bedroom. And then the bathroom. And that was pretty much it. And I was spending $2,000 a month. And now that I'm traveling, 50% um, of my time or 40% of my time, it's just asinine for me to spend money 100% of the time on a place to live. That's why I moved into the van. Um, and for foreseeable future I don't know how long I might even upgrade into a bigger van uh, later on down the road I don't know it depends on how this channel goes and then C to C to C says um, he, he's gonna be following suit soon he recently bought a van after having looked for months and he settled for one 
two weeks later, the one he really wanted um, pops up for sale. Now he owns two of them, he says. Uh, what again is the camera you, you're using? So I'm using the uh, DJI Pocket 2. And I'll, I'll try to put a link in the description below of, uh, of the video for the camera. Um, and the editing software, what are you using? I am using Adobe Pro and I have a few different um, audible audio uh, uh, software I use. Um, I can't remember the name of them right now. I'll put them in the, I'll put a text on the screen uh, when I edit this video showing you which one it is. He says, I wish you all the best in this new, very different life. Oh, I'm sure you know, a Max Air fan, 7500 with that diesel heater will work wonders to combat that condensation. Yeah, that's definitely true, and that's one of the great things about a, uh, a Max Air fan, especially a diesel heater, is it's dry heat and it gets rid of all the condensation. But what I've been finding, the reason why I, reason why I want to put rubber up on those windows, is that I haven't needed any heat. It's been 20 degrees, it's been 30 degrees, and it's about four or five hours after I stop the van and I climb into bed and I get the covers on. These two dogs radiate so much heat that it, it's like four or five hours. I gotta turn the defroster on here because my windows are fogging up. People are thinking I'm making some love in the van. Um, but these two dogs, they radiate so much heat that I've been able to stay warm for four hours and then when I, when I do wake up and I'm a little cold, it's just basically my face. Um, so I'm not sure how much I'm going to use a diesel heater. I got to get it in and I've got to use it in February and March to be able to determine that. But you're definitely right on that. So I wanted to give a shout out to those guys. Um, thank you so much for uh, the comments and we'll talk to you soon.